baby alligators right here, guys. Two right, three right here. Yeah, there. There's oh, one yeah. over here. And I thought I saw some over like on the front of them. Now I don't know where Mama's at. She's usually around here somewhere. Oh, um, that's a big over there. Yeah, there's a few more. Like some of that. There's actually one right, right there. He just poking his head up right on the other side. That looks right. Now, she's got about three different age groups of babies out here that she's watching. She'll watch her babies for about three years. So at the end of that third year though, she's trying to chase those big three-year-olds off because they're going to be about three feet long. And she's going to have probably about 35 to 60 more eggs getting ready to hatch. So she's got to move those three-year-olds out because they're going to be big enough to eat those new hatchlings. Um, if she cannot chase those three-year-olds off, she will eat them herself. Because now she's all about protecting those, those new hatchlings. got there it looks like lumps of poo it's like i don't know it's just what alligators eat okay she's feeding these guys yeah which ones are you throwing it to i think i'm gonna throw it to them over there okay watch your arms inside the thing oh i didn't I, go very far i know i've got five so four more okay try that wait 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 slow down over there. slow down look at the ball the fire for it slow down try these two here yeah, I'll try it over here. Okay, go. <laughs> you missed it. We just thought you'd let the woman know about it. Oh, no one's got it. Now look at that one. He's begging for it. Oh. Get it. Oh, he missed. Oh, 
<laughs> so they know how much food they should intake and how they shouldn't. Uh, some snakes can go a year with no food at all. If you're talking really big pythons and anacondas and boas, the really huge ones can fast themselves for a really long period of time. So reptiles don't need to eat every day like you and I do. No, we don't breed. We actually do have a male, and we could, but there's really... But of course, humans are the biggest predator for all wildlife. We rapidly destroy their habitat to develop it, and they are in decline due to people. Okay, so he's waking up a little bit. Now, other armadillos can only curl half of their body at a time. So, in Florida, if the armadillos get too excited, all right? And he's off, and he's going to bed. He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. He's moving. Look at him go. Okay, so... Um, we won't let him get underneath there. We'll center you back up here. But all armadillo species are pretty much blind. They cannot really see what's going on around them, but they have an excellent sense of smell. He smells something he likes over here. Look at him using that nose. He's smelling between the cracks in the boardwalk there. Underneath there, I'm sure there's lots of roaches and ants and beetles, and he's smelling them out right now. So although he's pretty much blind, like all armadillos, he can still survive. As soon as they venture off on their own, they don't last very long at that smaller size. So mom has a very important job, and that's to chase us away when we overstep our boundaries when you come across baby alligators which is very common here in the next 40 to 50 days they're all going to be hatching out here at wild florida and in the wild we're on the same cycle here in the in the outdoor day for the cows to get in cool themselves off with a nice swim or a drink then this guy figured out that when the calves come down to the water well that's a really free easy meal for him so eventually he actually took enough calves to take a nice big bite out of that rancher's profits, quite literally. And so once that rancher actually got enough of it, uh, he actually sent out a trapper from the state. They captured this alligator. And once they were able to, uh, he realized that being such a big and impressive animal, as well as being an alligator, that's just his natural behavior. So he actually requested that he not be used for his skin or his meat like normal. So instead, he was sent off to a breeding facility where he was a breeding stud for a number of years, and he was awesome out there. They have to have a team of six to ten people jumping on their back, keeping his mouth shut. Very dangerous dangerous not just for us but it's very stressful on the alligator as well so instead all we had to do was open up this back gate call him up by name and have him walk in on his own free will now how we're able to do that is mainly through something called the wild florida gator call sounds just like that you guys want to try that all right you guys sound really good but you look kind of funny that's okay he's not gonna listen to you guys though he knows you guys don't have any food so uh with andrew in the water here you guys will notice that crusher is paying most attention to him and that is because alligators are more territorial over their water than they are their land space however that pop call to crusher simply means that we have food for him so that's going to get him interested however that first piece of food he's always a little bit slower so we're kind of waiting for him to come on over to us but along with that pop call, we're going to ask three different behaviors from Crusher. We're going to ask him to come here with a verbal cue. We'll then point to the water for a visual cue. Once he makes his way on over, we'll do that. We'll ask him to stand up. We'll ask him to open his mouth up nice and wide. And finally, when he gets there, we'll ask him to hold and wait for his reward, which in this case happens to be chicken gizzards, as it is one of his favorite foods. You can see him really enjoying that chicken there. Now, with those different commands, you'll notice that we are only positively reinforcing good behavior. So if he comes over nice and slow, stands up nice and tall, holds really still, we'll have to reward all those uh, behaviors with a piece of food. However, he is still an alligator, so he's going to try to bite us almost every time we're in here. So if he's under the water, he's coming over too fast, he's trying to bite us, uh, those are obviously all negative behaviors. So instead of punishing him, we simply reset. We will try again and go for those good behaviors, like a nice good hold for something that we call do here called desensitization. All that means is we're kind of rubbing our hands on Crusher's face to let him know that our physical touch does not mean him any harm. And if he holds nice and still for us, we'll be able to get him some food. That way, if we ever have to come in, apply any medical care to this guy, it makes it a lot easier for us as Crusher knows that we're not even here to hurt him, so he'll hold nice and still for us. And he's going to get a good piece of food there. Now, you may have heard a little bit of a sound when he closed his mouth. Uh, these guys do actually have about two to 3,000 pounds per square inch on that bite force. Three very small fraction of that actual bite force. You can have him stand up nice and tall here. You can get a good look at all his pearly whites. Alligators do have 80 teeth in their mouth at any one point in time. Now, speaking of that, we don't just do medical benefit stuff with uh, our alligator here. We do like to do fun stuff. So what Andrew's going to do is he's actually going to turn his back to an apex predator. Kids, please stay in school. Don't be like Andrew. And a nice good hold for us there. But with those teeth, we're uh, fighting down some... Yeah, all right. I heard some kids say yes, so we're going to have to do it. Unfortunately, all we needed was one. So we'll have that alligator stand up, hold his mouth open nice and wide. Andrew's got a bit of a big head, so hopefully this goes well. All right. When you're ready, buddy, I'll give you a countdown for three. 
All right, here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. Yeah, no, just kidding. Insurance does not let us do that anymore after what happened last time. So uh, what we'll do instead is we'll put our hat on top of Crusher's head. This is a great testament to just how far his training has come. You know, to place a foreign object on his head, take a couple of steps away, they come back and retrieve that object. It's honestly better than my dog in the phone. And let's face it, Crusher does look really good in the hat. Ooh, nice, good job, Pop Forest on there. Activity to get alligators to exercise. Look at him go. So fast. <laughs> uh, that is Crusher showing you guys the slow-mo replay of what an alligator spinning looks like. As when they are very highly motivated, they can spin extremely quickly and pretty much bite the tip of their own tail. It looks like he's thinking here. We're going to try to spin him one more time. Try to spin him the other way for you guys. Now, like I said, when he is highly motivated, he will spin very, very quickly. And it is a huge behavior. So like I mentioned earlier, him trying to bite us is a negative thing. We don't want that to happen. However, with the spins, it's a little bit different as we are actually asking him to spin for us. We do want to reward that behavior. But it looks like we are down to our last piece of food here, so we're going to have to say goodbye to Crusher. However, he is one of our favorite animals in the entire park and one of our favorite animals in the world. So we would love to give this guy a big old hug, but we're not going to do that for pretty obvious reasons. So instead, uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to give him a big old kiss right on the nose. That is adorable, but I doubt it's the weirdest thing Andrew's ever kissed. Let's give it up for Andrew and Crusher. They did a great job working side by side for you guys today. All right. But Now, first on the line, we have some beautifully trimmed chicken, bone and all. But when it comes to what they eat, alligators and crocodiles, they don't just eat meat. And Hercules gets our first jump. It makes it look so easy. And you guys all did a great job. A plus for everybody, because I know that sounds kind of weird to clap and cheer for alligators. But it does help. Since we're open six days a week, ten hours a day, you guys purchased so much of the dehydrated pelleted croc chow, the stuff you get to throw in the water here at Wild Florida. Since you guys feed them so much of that food, the feeding show becomes our way of giving them the option to exercise and use their muscle. And that's a little feisty crocodile. Her name is Queso. Don't let her size fool you. That's one of the best jumping crocodilians in the show. Now, Queso is a more let's crocodile. That species found in southern Mexico and Belize. And she's a proud mama. We hatched out a clutch of her eggs last year. And as you can see, she is fired up today. She'll jump right off the heads of those big alligators. She does not care. And there's no teamwork involved here. Oh, nice slam dunk right there. Stomach acid of any animal on this planet, second only to vultures. So when it comes to digestion, they're more than capable of uh, digesting pretty much everything and anything. The one thing they have a hard time with is excess amounts of keratin. So they don't cough up a hairball, but they will pass a large amounts of hair through the keratin base. There's Dexter! Oh! And you will hear me say a lot of their names. You're probably thinking, there's no way that Florida man can tell those things apart. But since myself and my coworkers here are here every day, 10 hours a day, they're all different to us. Whether it's the teeth, the tail, the head, they're all individuals. But I'll be honest. As they are brought here by the nuisance trappers, the new ones have no idea who they are. Over time, we learn them. That's Long Jaws. He crumbled under the pressure. And Louie! Get that sausage. Nice. Those trappers are not paid by the state. They're paid by the meat and the hide of the alligators they removed. So these alligators here get a second chance of life because they didn't do anything wrong. They're opportunistic predators. They kind of wait for food to be around them. So if you go tossing a wild gator food, they're going to think people hand out food. It looks like snow crab legs are out on the line. These alligators eat better than I do. That's no joke. I love peanut butter jelly, ravioli. Keep it cheap. And Leprechaun, the American alligator, off the tip of the snout. There is a blind spot right in front of their nostrils. A little queso. And there comes Warthog. Look, he's sharing. How kind of him. But there's no teamwork again. They're not actually sharing. But in this setting, they get along just fine because food rains from the sky when you guys feed them. Wow! They're really making those crab legs last. I can't even make crab legs last that long.
Well, tell you what, I'm going to go inside and try to hand feed some of the gators and crocodiles. I'm not going to mess with Bonnie because she's not hungry. The reason she's up here laying in the sand is because she is guarding her nesting site. At the end of March, that crocodile laid a clutch of eggs a foot and a half beneath the soil. So now instinctively, she's going to guard that nesting site from anything. Whether well, that's another crocodile, an alligator, a bird, myself. So she's not aggressive. She's just a good mom. So when I go in there, if she runs at me and tries to bite me, that's fine. I'm not going to punish her. Just leave her be. She, again, is a good mama. And that is a West African crocodile. And the crocodiles we have here are not nuisance trapped or from the wild. They come to us from other zoos and facilities based on conservation breeding programs. Essentially, trying to breed endangered crocodiles to send their babies back to the wild where they belong. Now, I know a lot of you guys just got really quiet and nervous, but it's okay. When we come in here, this is a daily routine known as operant conditioning. Put simply, it's positive reinforcement training with food. So I'm not coming in here to look crazy or get a cool YouTube or TikTok. This is part of their routine to make it easier to work closely with them. If I never came in here, they may be way too excited to see me or terrified. So through this repetition, it can...